Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat. Let's just jump right on in. Thank you all for your continued support of our channel. Let's just jump on in, though, because this conversation piece is going to make me feel a little nauseous and sick to my stomach that I have to do this. But I keep telling everyone I am a... I am an objective observer. I am an an objective fan of sports. I can dislike something, dislike somebody, dislike some team, dislike something about that team. And while, yes, if they lose, I will ride that into the ground. But I also have to be fair. I have to be fair. And while you may think as I do this video that I'm I'm doing that blah, 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 but thing. However, there is a but because there will almost always be a but in the conversation. However, I have to give Coach Deion Sanders quarterback Shador Sanders, do everything God, Travis Hunter, and the Colorado Buffaloes a hell of a lot of credit because they went in to Orlando and mud stomped UCF, 48-21. That was the most complete game Colorado has played in a year and a half. It, it was. Now, we have to be objective, though, in our observations. <clears throat> UCF was a 14-point favorite. At one point, 15 and a half points. I think it got down to 13 and a half. So let's call it 14-point favorite. It's very, very rare that Vegas is so off on the spread. And what I mean by so off, I mean so off that the team that's favored doesn't just lose, but loses huge. You're talking about, I would have to think, because I thought the spread was big, but I'll never bet money on Colorado because I just don't want them to win. Just being honest. But if I was to put money on that game, I would have absolutely taken Colorado and the points. Because I don't think they're 14 points. I didn't think they could be 14 points worse than UCF. I didn't think UCF was that good. But if I had known certain things that I learned after about UCF. I hear my mouth. Sorry about that. If I had known certain things about UCF prior to that game. I would have gone all in on Colorado because the one thing that Colorado can do is throw the ball down the field. It's the one thing they can do well on offense. It's chuck it down the field. And I'm not saying the mid range, 10, 15 years. I'm talking chuck it down the field. It's the one thing that they do well on offense. How do you prevent that from happening? You need a pass rush. How do you slow that down? A pass rush. It's how North Dakota State slowed it down, but their defensive linemen are just a little bit, a step slow. And if they had been a step faster, they would have gotten to Shador Centers a lot more times. Nebraska was plenty fast. Um, CU's offensive line, it's still not good. You know, they're not going to, you can't fool me with being four and one based on beating North Dakota State, Colorado State. Um, Who else did they beat? North Dakota State, Colorado State. That's how how insignificant it is. I don't remember who the other team was. Um, Holy crap, how did I not remember this? UCF, obviously. Oh, Baylor, Baylor, Baylor. The, the, The fluke win over Baylor. 
By the way, Baylor lost to BYU at home this past weekend. So tell me how great the Baylor win was. The BYU is now 5-0, and and they were up 21-0, I think, in that game. It got a little closer at the end, 34-28. But Baylor, BYU won at Baylor. <clears throat> I don't know if Colorado has to play BYU or not. They do not, which is good for them because some of these games that are on their schedule, their schedule is favorable comparatively to what it could have been. Kansas is back to being absolutely terrible. Utah apparently I think is without Cam Rising now, which is massive. Oklahoma State is now 3 and 2 and gotten, you know, lost to K- ASU by 22, lost to Utah. Texas Tech is 4 and 1. They score a hell of a lot of points though. I mean, they barely beat Abilene Christian. So, th- th- what does that say about them? Not much. I mean, that game with the, with 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 Colorado could be a shootout in the fifties. Cincinnati, three and two. Yeah, not very good. Arizona just beat Utah. They're three and one, but they got blown out by Kansas State. And uh, who's left next week in two weeks? They got to go to they got they host Kansas State. That's going to be a big game for Colorado. That'll be a true, true test, true test for Colorado. Let's get back to this game. <clears throat> if you had told me, <clears throat> if I had known beforehand that UCF had one total sack, one sack in three games. There's no way in hell that I would have thought UCF had a chance in heck of winning that game. You cannot beat Colorado if you cannot get to Shadour Sanders. You have got to put pressure on him and be in that backfield the entire game. This was a game in which the Colorado offensive line looked like it was actually decent, but not because it was actually decent. It's because UCF has no pass rush. They actually did sack Shador twice, but he had all day to throw. Shador finishes with 28 for 35, 293 touchdowns, one pick. And I will tell you what, what really was impressive to me about Colorado. You're playing on the road. You're playing in 90-degree heat. It's humid. It's nasty. They got to Orlando, I think, on Wednesday I read or heard on a video. Um, <clears throat> the game was delayed by 50 minutes because of a rainstorm. Conditions aren't optimal when you're a speed team that relies on passing the ball compared to, compared to playing a team that runs the ball a lot, which was UCF. All of the things that should go against them, didn't. And then Shador throws a pick in the first possession. And you're like, wow, place is going crazy. I mean, they got the ball at Colorado's 30. They get the ball down first and goal from the five. And K.J. Jefferson gets Loses a yard, gains a yard, then throws a pick in the back of the end zone. Picked off by Preston Hodge. And UCF comes away with no points. When that happened, we were doing a live on this game. When that happened, I had a feeling that was going to come back and bite UCF in the ass. And it did. It absolutely did. Yes, the score ended up 48-21. Ignore the score. It was the situation. It was like the game reset. Shador throws a pick. K.J. Jefferson throws a pick. We starting over again, back at the 20-yard line. At the very least, UCF needed three points there. At the very least. To keep the crowd in the game. To keep the momentum. And then CU goes right down the field. 11 plays, 80 yards, touchdown. It's 7-0. And they're mixing in run and pass. <clears throat> you know, they got one, two, three, four, five running plays, six passing plays. They're mixing in run and pass. 
And whether they're running the ball successfully or not, it doesn't matter because what they're doing is they're making the defense honor the run. They're going to try to run it. And I think that's what they've done a good job of over the last few weeks is they've made a point to try to run the ball. Again, it doesn't have to be successful. But they ran 29 times for 128 yards. If you take away Shador's 5 for 15, that's 24 for 113. That's not a bad day running the ball as a team. There's no big rusher on the group, but that as a group is not a bad day. And if they can run the ball 30 times, 29 times while throwing it 35, that's hell of five balance for a team that primarily chucks the ball down the field. And what that will do is that will open up opportunity in play action. <clears throat> so they score, but, K- but UCF comes right back. One play, 75-yard touchdown pass from K.J. Jefferson to R.J. Harvey. 75 yards, touchdown, it's a 7-7 game. You're like, oh, boy, we got a game again. Okay. See who gets the ball back. And we saw a third and 15. Shadour chucks it down the field. And Will Shepard makes a catch for 47-yard touchdown pass, which – Realistically, I think really kind of turned the game big time. UCF DV is right there. It looks like he's thinking he's thinking he's the intended receiver the way he's playing that ball. Forgetting you freaking math whiz, knock the ball down. Your job is to prevent a completion. You intercepting the ball in the end zone does no good, does nothing. He plays that ball like he's the receiver. And Shepard, at the last second, gets his hands in, catch, touchdown, it's 14-7 CU. And you're like, oh, my God. You're talking about third and 15, goes to be fourth and 15. They're punting. Instead, it's 14-7. One thing I've seen CU do a lot of is get third. I mean, they get these third and longs, like, and they're able to make plays. But let's talk about UCF. K.J. Jefferson, their quarterback, stinks. He, he, he stinks. He's not good. He's not good. He's 6'3", 250. He's overweight. He's just not good. And there's a reason why he didn't do much at Arkansas. He's mediocre. Not good. They blow up. It's funny how they the way they promoted this game and, and marketed this game. Like, QB from SEC for four years, whatever. Whatever. He's on, the SEC, former SEC quarterback. He wasn't good. He wasn't good. And they, their first three games, they beat nobody. They won 35-34 over TCU. In a game they were down. Great comeback, but they're not very good. CU makes it 21-7. You know, you have <clears throat> 21-7. UCF comes back. Makes it 21-14. And again, you're sitting here saying, can UCF make, make a stop? And they do make a stop on downs at their own 36. But UCF has to punt it back. Now, this is where you go into the world of catastrophically dumb football. Because it's 21-7. <clears throat> sorry, 21-14. CU drives down and makes it 24-14 on a field goal with 42 seconds left. I'm sitting there on the live saying UCF should put their knee down and go to halftime. But they don't. They complete a pass. Then they have an incomplete pass, which stops the clock with 32 seconds. Then he gets sacked, and Colorado calls their, their timeout. They call their only timeout. They had one timeout left. And instead of just putting your knee down, go to halftime, 24-14, get the ball first in the second half. That's not what UCF does. They decide we're going to try to move the ball, even though we can't really throw the ball. We're not a good throwing team. We're a running team. UCF is a running team. And CU calls timeout, forces the punt, 
and Jimmy Horn returns it to the UCF 35-yard line. The punt was a terrible punt. Terrible punt. It was a line drive punt. Everyone knows that you want to get air under the punt so that your your gunners can get down there and meet the, the return man. He kicks the line drive. They can't get there quick enough. Horn makes a move. He's 27 yards. They're in field goal range. Seven-yard pass play. And next thing you know, it's 27-14 now instead of 24-14 at halftime. That was bad. That was real bad. UCF misses a field goal to start the second half. 55-yarder. And CU goes up and makes 34 to 14. What what you saw a lot of in this game was CU's defense bends and it bends and it bends and it bends, but it did not break. It's cliche, but it's a it was bend, don't break. So they bent a lot. And yet they would make plays, their defense made plays in situations similar to last week against Baylor made plays in situations that allowed them to stay in the game or allow them to, con- to continue to press forward or whatever it is. But it, it, it <clears throat> if you go back and look at this game, UCF had the ball inside of Colorado's 20, I think four times and didn't come away with points. At the very least here, this was when this was a 55 yard field goal. It's a long kick, but nonetheless makeable. They didn't score from inside the five on the first possession. Then they get the ball. They throw a pick. It's uh, – I'm sorry. Um, let me see here. They throw a pick. Da, 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 da. Where is that? This play-by-play is actually a little funky here. But – you know, UCF ends up making a 34-21 on the three-play drive, six, 92 yards. Again, you're saying maybe they're getting back, maybe they have a shot to get back in the game, but immediately thereafter, CU comes right back down the field. Boom, boom, boom. And it was not passing. It was Isaiah Augusta, 21 yards. Isaiah Augusta, 19 yards. You had running plays that set up this entire drive, and they go 41-21. UCF then gets the ball to midfield, fumbles at midfield. Force, they force a punt now. UCF again goes down the field. They get into they get to the Colorado four, and and Jefferson gets sacked. They had first and goal at the two. Again, this is a team that runs the ball. So what what did they run on first and goal? A pass play. Then they run the ball for minus two. Then another pass play, and then they pass and then they get sacked. I, I, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. This is bad coaching. CU outcoached UCF, and I've never thought I'd say that about something led by Deion Sanders, but they outcoached UCF. To be at the two and not and be a running team and not punch the ball in the end zone, I'm sick and tired of looking at these shotgun quarterbacks. Five yards behind the line of scrimmage, it, it makes no sense. It takes so much longer for these plays to develop. It is, it's crazy. <clears throat> but again, their defense forces a punt again. And what happens? UCF goes down the field, gets down to the 14-yard line, and fumbles the ball right into Cameron Silman Craig's hands, and he runs it back 95 yards for a touchdown. So this is now three possessions in a 48-21 game in which UCF had the ball inside the Colorado five because the ball got fumbled at the five or the six. So let's say it's not the Colorado seven. And this would have been a first down, by the way. It was third down and three. It would have been a first down. And you're sitting here like, bro, these guys can't get out their own way, but CU keeps making plays when they have to on defense. I'm not going to sit here and say that CU's defense is good. They got gashed. Like we have to un- we have to we have to be objective. You know, and then even in the next possession, UCF goes on downs, gets down to this Colorado's 33, 28 yard line. I mean, heck, they got down to the 22 yard line again. They were in co- in scoring position on Colorado the whole game. The whole game. There was a pick <clears throat> by um Travis Hunter. Which where, where was that interception? 
I don't know why they're not. It's not here on this list, but I, I think it's the one that was thirty-four to fourteen. That was when the interception took place. Um, Hunter made a great play on the ball, but you're talking about a situation in which they had the ball inside of the Colorado's twenty-two four times, and came away with no points. No points. Credit to Colorado's defense, man. They made plays when they had to. They made plays when they had to. But these are the this is the stats. UCF had 461 yards of offense, 284 passing, 177 rushing. They turned it over four times. There's your ball game. There's your ball game. Opportunistic football because it's 48-21. One of those turnovers went right back for a touchdown. The other turnover resulted in another touchdown because it was right there within within scoring range. What was it? 34 to 14 uh interception was that it or no? Maybe not. Uh, that was the one that resulted in actual points. Actually, the, the first the two of their turnovers resulted in points. 14 points off two turnovers. Now you could say the first turnover, they had to go 80 yards for that for those points, but they resulted in points. You had four possessions in which you had the ball at the 22 or in, and you did not score one point. That's insane. That's bad football. That's bad football. Time of possession was virtually even between the two teams, literally 30 to 2957. Penalties pretty bad on both sides, 7 for 80 UCF, 10 for 75 Colorado. <clears throat> See, you did a decent job slowing down on the running game because they, they UCF runs the ball. But, man, oh, man, to sit here and watch that game and, and, and watch how badly that coaching job was by UCF. But again, I have to be honest about what my belief is. My belief is that CU is still not that good. I think the conference is garbage. I think the conference schedule now looks a lot better for them. I picked them to go four and eight. Maybe they go six and six. Maybe they surprise me and go eight and four. I don't know. I, I think it, de it, de it, de it depends on pass rush. If you have a pass rush, you can beat Colorado. If you can't rush the quarterback, you're going to have problems. You're going to have problems. You have to be able to get Shador moving. You have to get to him. You have to hit him. Heck, I will tell you that this, you have to hit him even if it draws you 15 yards. And I don't mean hit him to just let him get hit. I mean hit him to hit him and, and put him and try to lay him out. Because if you can't pass, if you, and then people might say that's dirty. Okay, and that's football. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. Used to happen a whole lot more when I was growing up, but now they've made the game so damn soft, it's ridiculous. But yeah, 48-21. You have a fumble return for touchdown. You have a touchdown off another penalty. You have, I mean, another turnover. You have three, four possessions inside the 22 yard line. You can't score one point. That's unbelievable. I I don't know that I've seen that in quite some time. Again, UCF last year was six and seven. They made this like they built this up like UCF was some world beater. But I got to give CU credit. Ninety degree temperature. It's hot. It's humid. It's nasty. The place is loud. It's bumping. They're excited. And CU must stomp their ass. They just did. <clears throat> they really did. They really, really did. So, you know, I, I, I am I convinced or has my, does my is my mind changed as far as them no it, it hasn't it hasn't i still think they're a mediocre football team i think football altogether in general is not that great the conference is otherwise trash these teams are all virtually the same type of team i do not think carl's gonna win the big 12 no way in hell but they might be a little bit better than I expected in terms of end of season record. Do I think they're that much better of a team? Not really. I think their offensive line still stinks. I think their defensive line still stinks. Um, Travis Hunter's God. <laughs> I mean, Travis Hunter is godlike out there. And that play by Will Shepard, that touchdown pass making 14 7 was massive. Massive, massive, massive. End of the day, Deion Sanders can talk his shit if he wants to. He gets that right. They're four and one going into a bye week, and then they got to get get on the get on the get on the horse because they got KSU coming in, 
And if you don't know, KSU's running back or one of their running backs is Dylan Edwards, who played for CU last year. And right now, Dylan Edwards is, let's see what he's doing. He's their, he's their second running back. I know that. <clears throat> At least third, I guess now. 29 carries, 201 yards, averaging 6.9 per carry. They run the ball well. They are they they run the ball well. 6.9 yards per carry. DJ Giddens is their leading running back, 83 carries, 604 yards. Avery Johnson's their quarterback. So actually, yeah, Dylan Edwards is their backup running back. Avery Johnson's their quarterback, 44 for 321. Um, <clears throat> he's only been sacked four times all season. He's not a world beater as a passer, but he he's an athletic quarterback. And, and that win over uh, Oklahoma State last week was a pretty solid win. Defensively, I don't know too much about these guys. And that's really what it comes down to. Let me see if I can find anything on stats wise. Because if, if if I'm looking at another team with one sack all year, I'm not going to, I can't pick them. Two, three. Brendan Mott has four sacks. Austin Roman has two. Austin Moore has one. Damian Yayo has 1.5. Toby Osunumi got 1.5. They've got 12 sacks for 91 yards. That's that's a decent amount of sacks. That's a decent pass rush. That's your game right there. And this game is going to be in Colorado. So that is your game. They have, I mean, their defense has four interceptions, nine pass defenses. They have recovered two fumbles. They've turned them over 14 times in five games. That's that's a good amount of turnovers. So at the end of the day, we will see what happens. But that's going to be – I think that will truly be a tr- – the, the, that will be the litmus test of all litmus, te- litmus tests because KSU – Four and one coming off of a big win. Does KSU have a game this week? I'm not sure. Uh, KSU has a has a bye week as well, so they're going to have an open week too. Both these teams are having an open week, so there's going to be no excuses for no lack of preparation. It's a it's a 10:15 start Eastern time, so 7:15 in Colorado night game. People will be lit there. It's going to be a crazy environment. That game, I think, at the end of the day, is going to be a telling, telling game for Colorado. If they can win that game, they can jump on whatever freaking platform they want and talk all their shit. And maybe I'll have to reevaluate. But like I said, I give them credit. They mud stopped UCF. Didn't expect it, but I also didn't know he only had one sack on defense all year before that game. Because if I had known that, there's not a way in hell I would have picked that damn team to win. I, I would have dropped a lot of money on Colorado. That's all I got. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I got to eat some crow, man. I'm not saying I'm wrong because I still don't think they're very good. I think the conference is garbage. But, hey, it, it's, it could, you could say the same thing about the Miami Hurricanes. Miami Hurricanes playing the ACC. The ACC right now looks like complete trash, and yet Miami damn near lost to freaking Virginia Tech. So we shall see. Leave your comments, thoughts. Appreciate that. Pound that like button. Ring that bell, share this video. Come on now. 